Yikes. Hi, and welcome to the first live show of Half Wheels 2020 award season, which is now being interrupted by trucks outside of our office here in Dallas, Texas. My name is Charlie Minato. Socially distanced on your screen, albeit like right next to me, is Brooks Whittington, right? That is me. Not legally changed yeah. his name. And I'm Patrick the Greed coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona. So uh, this is not the top 25 that you want to see or the top 10 that you want to see, most likely, unless you're somebody like Fried Egg or Ensolo Designs. This is the Packaging Awards. Um, tomorrow will be our top 25 awards. We'll be back here again at 12 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Eastern. But today is a tradition that started at Smoking Stogie, I guess, over a decade ago, right, Brooks? Long time ago, yes. And so the idea here is that obviously there are a lot of creative packaging designs that we see in the cigar industry. Uh, we have the ability, Brooks, if you want to stop shaking the table because you're making my camera shake. Um, if you, uh, you know, if you walk around a cigar shop, you'll see a lot of interesting designs. And um, we think it's worthwhile to, to point out some of the best. These aren't just the, let's say, the prettiest packaging. Um, we take into account uh, creativity. We take into account the execution, a lot of times there's pretty packaging that looks great from a distance, but up close it is a bit flimsy. And so every year, I guess since 2012, because we didn't have one in 2011, because that was the, the first year of Half Wheel, or the year that Half Wheel didn't exist. But ever since 2012, we've done this list. We've done it live for a handful of years. And now in the spirit of 2020 and forward, we're doing it socially distanced. So uh, with that, anyone else have anything they want to say? No, I think we should get oh, to it. Oh, I guess we should go over the qualifications. So uh, yeah. pretty much anything, as long as it's new packaging. So um, it needs to be, the cigars don't need to be new, but the packaging needs to be new. So something, for example, like the Davidoff uh, Especiale 7, which is not a new cigar, but did get new packaging, would be eligible. Um, but something like, say, I don't know, the League of Body Year, the Rat, I guess that kind of got new packaging, but probably not enough for it to qualify. Um, but uh, Or, like, let's say back in the day when Camacho did uh, the big redesign um, in 2013, all of those items would be considered, even though the cigars aren't new. Um, and there's, in fact, one cigar, one packaging item on this list that... Uh, doesn't have any new cigars in it. So I think with that said, Patrick, you ready to get us started? Yeah. So starting off our list at number 10, you know, celebrating anniversaries is a common occurrence in the cigar industry. Every year we see new cigars that mark the anniversary of a company or maybe a person's time in the industry. And 2020, while it was different in a lot of ways, was not different in that regard. This time it's Alec Bradley celebrating the 10th anniversary of its ultra premium line, Fine and Rare, by releasing a collector's edition set that included original release versions of five previous Fine and Rare releases. Now, those aged cigars, which came from the 2014, 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019 batches, were then packaged into a very attractive box with what I believe is a zebra wood pattern, although don't quote me on that. Uh, it also has dual a dual of design, separate drawers for each release, each one of those containing five cigars. Now, only 500 boxes were produced, making this a rare release as well, and certainly a fine one in terms of packaging, and one that seemingly any fan of the fine and rare line would be proud to display. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, not very, you know, retailer friendly in terms of shelf space, but it's uh, it's really nice looking and uh, really well done, I think. Um, I haven't seen it in person, but the pictures look gorgeous. Well, that's wonderful. So uh, that would be the one of uh, not new cigars, but uh, new packaging. Obviously, it looks uh, quite similar to previous Fine and Rare releases, although the box shape is, is quite different. Right. So uh, moving on, we've got number nine, which is the Opus X 2020. Uh, now, Opus is fairly well known for their uh, somewhat elaborate packaging and uh, very well done packaging. Um, this was sold uh, exclusively in both the uh, local stores and duty-free outlets in the UAE. Um, it is a, a box of 20 cigars, and um, the name references the UAE's Expo 2020, which was scheduled to take place uh, in October of 2020, but had to be postponed or canceled. I forget which one. I have no idea. One I of wasn't the two. planning on attending. Um, anyway, it was shown off at a dinner. This specific cigar was shown off at a dinner in December 2019, but what is not actually sold until early 2020. Uh, it's a, a brand new blend, three Vitolas, and 
uh, it was an exclusive. It was not the first exclusive for the UAE. There was actually a, an earlier exclusive for Dubai, the city of Dubai, in uh, 2000. I'm checking 2017. 17, 17 right? Um, and uh, but that one was a kind of a eh, smaller release and kind of eh, you know it didn't have the, the huge you know packaging and, and things of that nature. Uh, interestingly, this box is actually very, very visually similar, if not exactly the same, um, to the uh, Opus X 20 Year Celebration that was released in 2016 with just different uh, colors. Yeah, I mean, it's a little... There's oh, it's a different design, yeah. That, that changed as well. I said visually similar. Yeah, it, it's it. the box shape is certainly the, the same design. Obviously, it's not a standard Opus X box, um, but, uh, you know... There, are, I don't. There is not a non-Cuban line of cigars that is like Opus X in terms of its popularity worldwide. Um, there certainly, when it comes to our site, you know, at this point, if there was Opus X shit in a box, like it would do better traffic than ninety-five percent of the cigars that we write about. Um, and you know, maybe that's not an entirely off uh, off topic name for an Opus X at this point, given some of the wild names we've seen before. But Opus X 2020, um, it's a bit surprising to me that it's not surprising we saw a new line of Opus X in 2020. What is surprising is that it was the exclusive for the UAE and not an Opus X uh, 25, because the, this box, the box that's on the screen right now, the Opus X 20, that was for the 20th anniversary of Opus X, which took place five years ago, or six years ago now. Um, last year would have been the 25th anniversary. Fuente is certainly not shy when it comes to celebrating anniversaries. Opus X is a, a brand like no other, particularly in the non-Cuban world, and it, it seemingly would have been the time. I wonder if we would have had a, a, you know, if 2020 hadn't played itself out the way it did, if there would have been a trade show, if we would have seen like a really grand celebration of Opus X. But in all my talking to the Fuentes and the, the people close to them, it doesn't seem like, that. no one's let it slip that they have those things planned. They've talked about other projects that, that they haven't announced yet. Obviously, they've launched things like Rare Pinks recently um, and other stuff like that. But uh, as far as I know, there there hasn't been any leak about what a 25th anniversary Opus would look like. I imagine it probably would make this list, though. They're probably just waiting on the boxes. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> as is this uh, the 2021 version of our packaging awards. All right, uh, Brooks, I believe you are up. This is the confusing one. Oh, right. So, uh, tied for seventh place is the Hoya de Nicaragua Shut the Box. Now, this is the one that uh, Charlie mentioned was, uh, has no new cigars in it. In fact, it's full of regular production. Antonio. Antonio? Yes. Antonio. Um, cigars. Uh, but it's essentially, it's a box of cigars. And when you take the cigars out of the box, uh, there is a... Uh, location for you to toss dice dice um and you have a wonderful uh, row of numbers on the top that uh you basically just uh move back and forth uh the players roll the, the game is the the object of the game uh is uh the players roll two dice and use the numbers achieved on the dice to turn over numbers one through twelve um it includes 20 cigars and you basically take them out, like I said, and there's in the bottom. The dice are actually located in the, uh, they're kept in the, underneath the numbers there on the top. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a game, Shut the Box. I had never actually heard of it uh, until I saw it being played in, uh, in Nicaragua uh, when I went down there at some point in the past. Um, but uh, it's a, a game that's very popular um, there, apparently. Um, each Vitola in the actual release was limited to 500 boxes. And... Uh, there you go. It's a pretty cool, um, very cool design and very, very well done and as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's not something you would even notice really all that much if you open the box and it's a box of cigars. But once you take the cigars out uh, and you have those dice in there, the only thing that could have made it better is if the dice weren't loose inside the box. If you had a place you could actually put those that they were kind of, you know, stuck so that they didn't just roll around inside the box when you pick it up. Yeah. And I mean, plus the, you know, the best part about this packaging, and I think it's the only one on the list here, is we have, uh, I know Patrick would appreciate this. We have a nice little recognition i don't know how well the player is going to pick that up but it, there is a sticker that mentions hoya's half wheel factory of the year award ranking for 2019 hey, uh, look at that nice feature i also like the fact that there are instructions um in for how to play the game because uh we certainly needed them um <laughs> but yeah this is interesting it's one of two different sort of 
dice game themed releases this year. Uh, General Cigar Company also released a cigar called CAO Bones, um, which came with dice as well. It, I don't think it was as well done. And, and certainly for me, the, the separation between the Hoya release and the General release, different uh, activities there. Although the Bones, Patrick, that was a Domino's release. I take that back, right? It actually incorporated both. It came with dice. Um, Bones is a term that's been yeah. extended to both dice and dominoes. Um, and the names of the Vitolas, the of the I believe, are draw from both dice games and domino games. Got it. But the, the thing for me was that obviously this game has the flip up element, um, which uh, is nice that they incorporate uh, we see boxes get turned in cigar boxes get turned into guitars or to, to we've purses. seen cigar put amplifiers purses uh, all sorts of things and uh this is interesting because it's an actually already functioning one you know right off the retailer shelf i wonder how long before we see someone particularly with rise in popularity of chess um, recently, thanks to a certain Netflix uh, miniseries that was fantastic. I wonder how long before we see somebody go full on chess board. Brooks suggested yesterday that maybe they should start with checkers first. Uh, also, there apparently is a chess board shortage, so that might be an issue. I know Davidoff has an upcoming limited edition for next month that has a chess board inspired like pattern on the top of the box, but no chess pieces. But at some point, I imagine we're gonna gonna see someone do that. I, I would imagine there's probably humidors that are are sort of uh, dual functioning like that. But uh, I'm curious to see if we see any more board games. Um, you know, yeah, Twister I mean, you could, would be the magnum opus for me. You could see right here, even with just reusing this entire thing right here, you could just put checker pieces inside that uh, section there. Be a little tight, though. Well, like make it, a bigger cigar. The, yeah. All right. So uh, that was one of our seventh place uh, awards. And I believe that I'm responsible for mentioning the other one. Um, and that is the Diesel Whiskey Row Sherry Cask Holiday Edition. It is uh, not the first cigar to have barrel-aged marketing with it. It's not the first cigar to come looking shaped like a barrel. It's not the first cigar to, I don't know, all sorts of things. Uh, have an ashtray built into it. It might be the first cigar, it's, as far as I know, the first cigar that's both shaped like a barrel and has a built-in ashtray to it. Um, and so this is a release. It's a limited edition extension to the Diesel Whiskey Row um cherry cast line it's uh which is a cigar that has part or one component that is aged in barrels that previously held both sherry as well and or finished sherry and then finished off bourbon um and so the spent barrels were then shipped or i presume they were shipped to nicaragua uh the cigars made at aj fernandez um and for this release general didn't use spent barrels uh brooks noted in his review and i certainly can attest to it the inside of this uh smells like oak um, but for me, what really separated this release was not the ashtray, which is functional, but maybe not the most usable thing, particularly if the cigar box isn't empty, because then you're gonna have to put the cask barrel thing back into a humidor. For me, it was just the execution. Uh, all, each one of these boxes is different because of the wood grain pattern on the outside. Uh, there's actual oak inside. Um, the, they're using the metal hoops. Uh, I don't, we can't really tell if it's actual stave, like manufacturing, like how they, uh, Hooperage would make a real barrel, but it's pretty close to it. I would not store, use this to age spirits in, but I don't know, maybe somebody can try and, and be more adventurous than I am. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I always like, and I, I say this with a grain of salt and a little bit of caution, um, cause it can yield mixed results, but I really do like packaging that brings the theme of a cigar to life. Um, just like the Aventura of the Conqueror last year was shipped in a uh, box that looked like a ship. And to ref it reflected the the story of the nautical adventures of its namesake. And, f you know, for the diesel brand to use a barrel to bring this release to life, I thought was a really nice touch. And something that also scores points with me in that in addition to all the details of the construction, which Charlie, you just mentioned, I think it also looked really good on a shelf after its use, if that's your thing. And that also scores a little bit of points with me because I see so many cigar boxes just piled up that, you know, who knows what they're going to be used for. And so to be able to extend the life of this, either as an ashtray, you could put your coins in it. I mean, you could do all sorts of things with it and it would look good on a, sh like on a shelf or displayed somewhere. So that also, again, got it some favorable votes from, at least from my end. Uh, one note, um, there is a, uh, it, there is a, small problem with these uh the screw coming up uh a little bit you'd have to uh re re-screw that in a little bit but uh i could see that being used for change like you said 
Yeah. Also of note, Brooks cleaned the ashtray out from yesterday when it was, did. Uh, had ashes in it. And this is why like, we have... Apparently probably went back into a humidor. This is why you shouldn't use that as an ashtray. At least not until the cigar box is empty. All right. Moving on, number six. So I mentioned uh, celebrating anniversaries earlier, and at number six is another release that celebrates the anniversary of another cigar line. It's the fifth anniversary of the Elwa Wednesday line from Foundation Cigar Company. Now, not only is this Brooks' favorite name for a cigar and his favorite word to probably say in the world, uh, but it comes packaged in an impressive chest that folds out and features art from Thief Operandi. Now, I'm a big fan of art being incorporated into a cigar release, which is why I like this release so much. Uh, the Elba Wednesday story is a key part of Nicaraguan culture and has become a central part of Foundation's portfolio. Seeing it celebrated with this release is very impressive. And if there's one thing that I might want to do with this is to actually remove the art and display it properly once the cigars have been removed. It's also one of those designs that isn't inherently retail friendly, which some people do take issue with. But I think that's allowable from time to time, especially for limited releases such as this. And with only 500 boxes produced, it is a limited release. For me, great follow up and evolution from the Foundation Chest Collector Humidor from 2018 and another showpiece worthy of recognition. Yeah, it's uh, it's wonderful in the execution and how it looks. Uh, it is definitely not retail friendly. Um, it is very actually uh, uh, flimsy when you're talking about opening up those two um, sides. They they're not uh, they're not all that stable, but. Um, in terms of how it looks and the art and everything, it's it's really amazing and very very well done. Um, I do wish that you could take that art off and put it on the wall for people who care that kind of, you know for that kind of thing. I it's not my cup of tea in terms of the art itself, but it's it's very well done. And I wish there was a way to take it off and, and put it up like the uh, what was the one that had that one series one. Yeah. Um, but uh, other than that, it's it's really, really well done. And um, I could see him doing this for, you know, any number of anniversaries over and over again and just, you know, killing it every time. It's really a great, uh, great package. I know that I'm not supposed to be the one tripping in here, but I actually did look. Uh, so it's screwed in, the, the lid is. So I think you could remove the artwork pretty cleanly without, like, totally tearing the the wooden part of the box. The question is going to be you're going to have a little bit of a challenge if you want to frame it. You're gonna have to get sure. a pretty deep frame, but um, it's not as challenging as it would be with most boxes because they use screws. So a little bit easier, not as easy as the Oliva where there was an actual wall hook already built into it, but right. maybe not as hard as most. So that's uh, number six and moving on to number five. And you know, if there has been one topic that has dominated my cigar related conversations over the last five years or so, it's been FDA regulations. and. While seemingly no one is like them, they've generally kept their thoughts to the spoken and written word. But in 2020, Jossam Crawl took things a step further by releasing a cigar with the sentiment of Risty Rostevsky in the name, Fuck the FDA. Now, paper-wrapped bundles of cigars generally don't make the packaging awards list, and for good reason. But this one did feel different. Using the first sheet of the FDA's 499-page document about cigar regulations to wrap the bundle without naming the cigar or adding anything else to the bundle. The message was blunt, but the technique was subtle. I'd be interested to know if plastering fuck the FDA on a box or a bundle of cigars would have some retailers maybe a little hesitant to display it, but this seemingly unassuming packaging didn't present any issues for displaying it in a retail setting. Remarkably subtle, very resourceful, Jossam Crawl's Fuck the A claims is the number five spot on our list for 2020. Did you just say fuck the A? No, I said fuck the FDA. Definitely sound, did it, what did it sound like on your end, Brooks? No, no, it did. Yeah, I thought it was in a porn. Yeah. I think Jesus, for a minute Patrick. There. I have to have an HR meeting after this. Um, so, Clean your guys' uh, ear out. Yeah. Man. I uh, can't wait for the follow-up to this cigar from Restay. Um, I Look, this is one of these examples of if you're going to call a cigar, fuck the FDA, which may or may not be a good idea, you should go all out, and Restay went all out. I do wish the bands, I know they do say fuck the FDA on them, I wish the bands were a little bit more thematic, like the the outside of the bundle was um but um yeah this is a, a controversial cigar i got complaints from various cigar manufacturers saying like why are you guys writing about it why are you reviewing it i'm sure i'll get more complaints today I'm surprised that one hasn't shown up already on my computer but um you know this is the 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 creativity aspect here is is well done the execution's well done it's not 
the most innovative of design. It's a piece of paper folded up, but um, I, I don't know how you can think back of, of packaging that was memorable from 2020 and not add uh, Jocelyn Cole's Fuck the FDA. I don't know if the bundles with the, the Fuck the FDA stickers really would have deterred many of the Jocelyn Crawl retailers. This is a limited edition cigar. Jocelyn Crawl's is already a company that's not selling to, I would guess, the majority of cigar shops in America. It's a got a very loyal audience, but one that probably skews a little bit younger and, and one that's going to skew to be more open to things like this or CBD infused cigars and, and other things that, that Jocelyn Crawl does. Brooks, it sounded like you had something to say. Uh, yeah, just a quick question to both of you that just came to me. Um, what if the bands were made out of paper from the actual covering as well? Would that be better or worse for y'all? Probably worse because as someone that had to read that thing, <laughs> it, it, like you wouldn't be able to tell what was going on. I think that having like uh, not like Patrick mentioned having a sticker on the bundle. I think having a band that much more emphasis that didn't look like it was the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe going on, and much more emphasized the fuck the FDA aspect. I think that would have maybe I don't know if it would have scored any higher on this list, but it would have like I just when you tear off the page, particularly like, and this is another aspect if you put these cigars in a tray as most retailers would have to if they're going to open these bundles up, like. Yeah, it says fuck the FDA on it, but the, the thing you notice about the band is that there's the lion on it. Yeah, Maybe I think wrap the cigars yeah. individually in the legend in the like mm -hmm. like newspaper style. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of things you could do with it. I don't you know, you could you could take it a lot of different ways. Um I don't know if printer paper <laughs> would be maybe an ideal way to band a cigar. That's just my own interpretation but you i certainly think you could probably do it i mean heck why not yeah i think there's i don't know i just look at the the lion which i think in other circumstances would be perfectly fine um in this release it kind of takes away from the rest of what's going on i know there's probably a million reasons why the lion's there but regardless uh i this might be the first bundle that's ever made this list so congrats to restay and company indeed on a very very different note our number four cigar on this list is J.C. Newman's Yawa. Now, this box, the exterior of the box, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's nothing particularly fantastic about it. Uh, same goes for the bands. There's nothing wrong with the bands, but uh, they would not make themselves uh, present on this list otherwise. Well, the reason why it's here is because of how the cigar is made. So if you look at what's on the screen right now, you will see that rather than in the middle of the box, there are cigars, but they are wrapped up in what looks to be wood almost. And it's actually a leaf of a palm tree that's been dried out. So this is a old school manufacturing method of how to, uh, I guess, age cigars is maybe not the best way, but how to form cigars. Most cigars uh, that we review are rolled in a very specific manner. They get bunched, they, the wrapper gets put on, and then they get put into molds um, for a few days maybe. They get rotated while they're in the mold sometimes. Um, and the molds help to keep the shape of the cigar so that way uh, it's the perfect circle that you see. And if they're box pressed, they get rolled to be a circle and then they get um, put into trays where they literally kind of get smashed so that they end up being rectangular. This method is one that you is you do without molds. Um, the cigars get rolled probably with molds when they get bunched, but once the wrapper gets put on, the bands immediately get put on afterwards, and then they get tightly wrapped up inside of this palm leaf, which is a method that used to be used in Cuba, I guess, way back in the day. Um, and J.C. Newman decided they wanted to come out with a cigar that did this. What's interesting about this method of, of rolling or of aging, I guess, is that the cigars don't end up being, they're, they're neither circle nor they're uniform. So you can see right here, this is what the bundle looks like. Uh, when we pull it out of uh, the box, when it showed up here over the summer. And you can see there are some things that are close to a circle, and then there are some things that are just not remotely close at all uh, to being a circle. And once you undo the bundle, uh, the cigars generally keep their shape. They do soften a little bit, but they aren't going to go back to being circles. The, the ones that look like triangles are going to remain to be triangles. The ones that look like ovals are going to be ovals. And the ones, I don't know what the third cigar from the right looks like, um, whatever shape that is. Screwed up. Um, it's going to look like that. And um, this is one where form meets function, function meets form. And, uh, you know, I, there, there's nothing to complain about here. I really, really liked the idea um, of trying something new. The cigar was also quite good. Um, and, um, you know, I think it's a deserving place, particularly given the idea that the, you know, the packaging itself here plays a role in how the cigar 
uh, looks and how it smokes. And to be quite honest, I bet there's a big difference between if you were to leave the cigars in the bundle versus for like a year or two versus if you take them out of the bundle and just put them back in your humidor. I bet if you smoke those cigars side by side two years later, it would be uh, probably two very different experiences. Yeah, I thought the uh, when I opened this up, I didn't know what it was um, immediately off the bat. And when I opened this up to uh, to photograph it in the studio, uh, I was like, this is fantastic. It's just it looks wonderful. It's extremely well done. The color scheme, uh, the the fact that when you open it up, you don't see cigars. You just see that uh, that uh, uh, leaf. Hmm? leaf leaf. I keep thinking banana leaf for some reason that leaf. Uh, and, and, and there's more than that, just than that, than, um, than that. If you go back, go back to the uh, open shot of the, the box, if you don't mind. What I noticed when I was actually photographing it was the fact that you have these little inserts um, that are curved, specifically curved, so that you can actually, th so that it keeps that bundle exactly where it needs to be inside the box. Um, you know, little details like that. The color scheme is excellent, and uh, it's, it's really fantastic when you open it up. Uh, I felt really bad throwing that, uh, that leaf away. Uh, when I when I photographed it, it was uh, it was really quite quite cool when I opened it up for the first time. Yes, so congratulations to JC Newman and Company for number four on the packaging list. All right, going on to number three, we've got uh, somebody who uh, a company that is on uh, on the list quite a bit uh, is the uh, Davidoff. This is the uh, Year of the Ox, which is the newest edition in their Chinese zodiac calend uh, sorry calendar yes calendar series. Um, basically they release every year, they release a different, um, cigar based around the, uh, Chinese Zodiac calendar. Um, this year is the year of the ox and obviously, and, uh, they're always the same color, gold, red, um, started the series itself started in 2012 with the year of the dragon. Um, but it's gone through so many iterations at this point, um, different sizes, different boxes, um, different, uh, you know, designs around a, a singular box theme. Um, there's nothing that isn't, you know, a, just a traditional looking cigar box, but, um, each one is, each one is noticeably different than the other. For example, this one has, uh, not only curved edges, as you can see on the, um, on the bottom of the box, but also a very interesting, um, exterior finish, which, uh, shows up when you actually feel it. It's actually, it's actually raised, so you can actually see it when you, um, when you pick it up and when you feel it itself. Uh, and it's, it's, really, it's really a fantastic look, and it, 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 it does very well in terms of actually showing off um, how it is uh, different than the other you know, examples in the series. Um, I was really, really impressed with it. I expected to be impressed, but it, every year Davidoff seems to kill it with these, uh, with these uh, releases. Uh, and the scar is not bad either. So, yeah, you know, with each release of the Zodiac series, I feel like I'm being taken into a high-end design studio or something where, you know, master artisans are showing off their craft. And, you know, while this it, it is absolutely a gorgeous box, it may not be the flashiest packaging on our list. It doesn't take up a ton of space. It doesn't come in the shape of an ox or anything like that. But what matters is that. The results are elegant and impressive and graceful and nuanced. Uh, you know, the curved wood, like you're saying, and the detailed lid, or for me, where this where this box really shines, uh, showcasing that subtle elegance and grace, both in its form and seemingly in the process that led to the final result. Yeah, it, it's it's really gorgeous. Uh, it better be for forty bucks a, a cigar. Um, but there, as a quick note, there's a cutter that actually has the same. Uh, exterior finish that uh, Davidoff uh, sells as well in conjunction with this release. You know, I actually just realized now that we might have fucked up this entire list because Davidoff released the humidor of this cigar, which technically would have been eligible, but it like showed up a month and a half later, like right at, before the end of the year, or was it right at the beginning of 2021? I can't remember. But there's a humidor release of this that there's like eight of that's just absolutely outrageous but also i think is like the cost of a nicely optioned honda at this point so i wonder what would have happened if we had redone this would the year of the ox made it twice with the humidor i don't know is we'll have to even, figure that is out is that even allowed that brings well, up a 2014 to, discussion in my head that we i seem to think we had somewhere it used to not be but then we we changed it last year to allow for humidor releases to make it but i don't think we've had something where it's come in both 
the we haven't had this question when it's coming both a humidor and a regular box regardless the regular box is pretty fantastic the humidor is beautiful and if you're in the market for a forty thousand dollar humidor um let davidoff know uh number two is you know if, if we were going to do a list of all-time most iconic cigar packaging um there would be a whole bunch of cuban brands Opus X would probably make it on the list. And the one that would be like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that, but it deserves to be on here would be the CAO Vision because that is a cigar that is known for its packaging and not for the cigar. And for those of you that have smoked the cigar, the original one, not the new one, uh, that might be better. It's a old CAO release back when the Oscar family still owned uh, the brand. It came out in 2007. The cigar was made at La Aurora. No one really cares about any of that because the, the key feature with the CAO Vision was that the box lit up. You plugged it in the wall and it had blue light that would come out of both the top of the box as well as on the inside of the box. And it would sit in humidors. People would buy the cigars that were quite expensive. The cigars, most people didn't seem to like. They did not think the plan was very good, but the box lit up. And so everyone remembered the CAO Vision as that was the one where the box lit up. Uh, General decided to bring it back. They have generally stayed away from bringing back old CAO projects, um, but they brought back Vision this year and they updated it a little bit so it's a new box that uses leds uh on the original box where it says CAO at the bottom uh, lip there there would have been a digital hygrometer that is now gone um the inside has been updated a little bit it's a little bit classier of a release um the bands are basically the same with some small minor adjustments and just like the original one you plug it into the wall and when you open up the lid it lights up, it emits light both inside the box, outside the box, um, outside on like the handle areas, which are kind of hard to see in that picture. Um, it is the only box that's ever I had a better picture that's only ever made this list uh, that lights up. Um, and uh, yeah, it's if it didn't light up, it would not have made this list, I have a feeling, because it's otherwise a, a decently done, very glossy white box with basically no contrast. Um, but it it does light up. So um, here it is. Uh, I would say if you're going to have to remake the CAO Vision, General did a pretty good job. The cigar, fortunately, I have not smoked it, but Brooks, you thought it was better than the... Uh, the what original. I remember of the original, it was better. Uh, yeah. I'll leave so, it at that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's the CAO Vision. If you're wondering what it looks like when it's not lit up, it looks like that. And um, yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully this is the last company that puts light up lights on their boxes it doesn't really work is the problem because unless you turn the lights out like you see that it's got blue light emitting from it but it's not the sort of monty python you know opening up of the treasure chest explosion of light that you're hoping for unless the lights are out and as much as some of you probably would like to see us turn the lights out for these live broadcasts um the hr department would not let us do that yeah you know the thing about uh, the vision this was probably the one that actually and this may sound like sort of tugged at my heartstrings or my memories a little bit. Um, as soon as I saw this, this took me back to my early days smoking cigars. Um, and in particular, a shop I used to frequent in Seattle. Uh, it was, they had cabinet style humidors for all the cigars. And in the middle of one cabinet, they had a shelf that was designated as the top shelf. Again, even though it was in the middle. Uh, and I remember the original vision sitting on that shelf and obviously for good reason. Uh, probably because it was easier to power from that spot and it was a high-end cigar. Uh, I must say I was a little bit disappointed not to see the external digital hygrometer included on the revamped version. I thought that was one of the equally notable parts of the original version and could possibly get another modern update in some way. Uh, but the fact that this can also function as a humidor is another interesting selling point. I th at least that's what it's described as being able to function as. But like I say, this is a cigar. As soon as I saw it, it took me right back to, God, 14, 15 years ago, you know, when this, when the vision first came out and when I was really getting into it and really falling in love with cigars. Yes, we've been told there's a correction that the original one used batteries, which I never owned the original CEO Vision box. So I, I'm going to have to take our commenter's word for it. So we'll correct that. And Patrick, you're right. This is the box is made. It's, it's not a humidor, but it, it does have a bit better sealing capabilities than. A normal box i always get skeptical there is a difference sure. between the prometheus releases that come in legitimate humidors and something like this where it is not a regular old cigar box but like also you know it can be used as a humidor but not uh not specifically designed to be used as a humidor yeah and one one quick thing 
Um, I don't know why they chose that color for the lights. It really does not make those cigars look good in the dark. Um, I would have gone with the more well, but the question becomes pleasing is, color. So the issue here, because I thought about this, is that most of the time it's going to be the room is going to be lit when the like in the humidor, right? You're not going to turn the lights out in the humidor or show off this box most likely. So, and it, quite frankly, if you were doing that, it, it's going to defeat the purpose because no one's going to know the box lights up except when they see the lights are off in the humidor and they're going to be like, do you guys have a power issue? So you have to pick a color for the light because otherwise, if it's just regular light, it's not going to be as obvious, particularly if it's across the humidor. Well, I wouldn't choose their white light. I would have chosen something like an incandescent, you know, orangish light. Would go say one, better with the with the color of the wrapper. I, just don't I mean, know. look at the go back, go back, go back to the picture. Oh, it's it looks like it looks like crap. It's not great. It looks like you're it's you're pretty close to a black light. But what I'm saying is, imagine if you're in a humidor and you see this on a shelf and you're ten feet away. With the blue light, it's obvious. But if, if you go to an incandescent orangish light, you're not really you might notice it, but you also may not notice it. This is impossible to avoid if the box is open, even if it's, it's if the lights are on in the humidor. And I'll say one other thing too. Remember that this originally came out in 2007. And I think there was a desire to stay true to that uh, original design. And look, I'm not a design expert. I would love to know where the colors of lighting were in 2007. Uh, and I think yeah, orange we, existed. No, no, no. But you know, like there was certainly <laughs> color schemes that were popular at the moment that were. Thanks, Grandpa. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Charlie, start the scroll. I'm the old one here. Can you start the scroll on the bottom again? I, Not until that, you, it's for tomorrow. Okay. Uh, but no, I think there's, you know, look, there's certain, look, neon was big in the 80s, right? You know, everyone was wearing neon nylon jackets and stuff. There were certainly colors that were hot in different times of history. And I think that that blue may not necessarily work or may not be as relevant in 2020. But when you go back to 2007, it may have been a little bit more culturally relevant and appropriate. And remember, too, CAO was a kind of a rock and roll brand. And uh, this was a to me, it sort of reminded me of stage lighting and mood lighting for, you know, your, you know, your high end condo or whatever. So, again, it may have different interpretations in the modern day, but I also think it was trying to be true to where it was in 2007. I'd be interested to know if that was the case. Um, but I tell you this, if the goal is to sell cigars, that color doesn't help. No, but I just don't, if you had to pick a color though, and you certainly have spent more of your life paying attention to how colors and photographs look, like Indeed. I, there's not a good one. Like orange isn't gonna look great. Green's gonna look atrocious. Red's probably not what you wanna see. Like, I just don't know what the, I don't think there's a good option, I guess would be my point. This looks a little bit like a black light, but like if you can't use, you have to balance this act between is it going to make the cigars look like trash or is it not going to get noticed? And uh, if you're trying to make sure it gets noticed, I'm not sure there's a great option. Anyway, the good news is the uh, next release, we won't have to talk about uh, lights or colors. That's right. The number one choice of the half wheel staff for the packaging year award 2020 <clears throat> it was the Cohiba Royale. Uh, General released this cigar in April 2020, and uh, it's a three Vitola line, uh, ranging in price from $24 to $29 each. And as you can see, uh, the defining characteristic of this packaging, this box, is a uh, the essentially the the cigars are in a rainbow arc arch uh, that rises up from the actual box itself. Well, it doesn't rise up; it's risen up. It, it you know it doesn't actually rise up when you open the box. But um, it's a it's very very well done. It's not the first time this has been done. Um, the first time I saw it was in the uh, Romeo and Julieta uh, Grand Churchill Humidor. Uh, during one of the festivals in Cuba that I covered, I forget which one. Um, it was a much, much better um, look uh, when you're talking about that. Uh, it's, a, it's a more expensive. Uh, how much is that one? Uh, 50, 50, 50 grand. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to have a little bit more money to play with in that regard. But uh, in terms of the actual aesthetics and how it's done and how it's, uh, how it's made um, and how it looks when you open that uh, box up, 
uh, it's it's very surprising when you open that box up if you hadn't seen it before. Uh, you don't expect to see this 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 rainbow of uh, cigars, you know, pointed down at uh, uh, coming out at you. Uh, and it's it's very well done and uh, very visually unique in terms of uh, what's on the market in, in America the, today. Yeah, I mean, for me that so to in full disclosure, if you I'm sure most of you probably don't keep notebooks full of our packaging awards winners. The Romeo uh, actually uh, tied for number one last year. Uh, that is a much better version of what the general did with the Cohiba release. It's much more elegant. It's a little bit more subtle. I think that having the row of cigars on the below it um, is just a better overall look. The humidor was made by Ellie Blue, the French humidor maker. Um, but like like I said earlier, it's 50 grand. So um, these boxes are, are a little less than 300 bucks. Um, and General gets credit here for, there, there's no question. You put the two of them on the table, price is no object. 100 people out of 100 or 100 people out of 99 are probably going to take uh, the Romeo. But, um, you know, General gets credit for being the first one to make this in a regular production release, as far as we know, for doing it at a semi-affordable price. Certainly 25 bucks is not the most affordable. Um, and it's well done. There's there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, although, Brooks, you had an issue with the packaging, right? Something about it. Smell, maybe? Uh, yeah, they were, it, it smelled uh, very, very much like paint. Um, but... That had nothing to do with the actual physical qualities. In fact, if you go back, um, you know, I was concerned when I opened it up and after looking at it, I would be concerned about it, you know, cigars uh, coming out or, or being damaged or something of that nature. But they are in those slots um, very, very well. And uh, when we opened it up, all, when I opened it up, all of those cigars were, were, were stacked in there. There was no issue whatsoever in terms of that. So uh, kudos to them to being able to... Uh, to, they, you see this bar across the top here that actually keeps them um, keeps them uh, steady. So uh, kudos to them to, to thinking about for thinking about that kind of thing. Um, it's a very unique uh, packaging when you open it up. It's very uh, it's very cool and um, yeah deserves it as far as I'm concerned. For, obviously, yeah. And this is the second or third year in a row that Cohiba is General's Cohiba has won this award. Um, they previously did it with Spectre. Um, which is their flagship $90 cigar. There was no Spectre in 2020. I would have loved to have known what they were working on. Um, but it, it's just a well done. And unlike, um, you know, it combines the innovation, the execution. It's also a little bit more retail friendly, not entirely. It's a big box for uh, 10 cigars, but a little bit more retail friendly than, than some of the other stuff um, that's on this list. And I'm, I'd love to see how many people are going to see other companies try to, to do something with this arch effect. Um, I would particularly love, love to see what Davidoff comes up with if they do it for uh, the year of whatever the fuck 2022 is um, because it would I could see them just killing it um, but congratulations to General I don't know who was responsible for designing and producing this box but um, congrats to you uh, it's another year of packaging awards for those of you that are curious about the full top 10 it looks like that that is packaging I'm sure that some people will proceed to take their ratings and use that as top 10 from Half Wheel 2020 with no context. Uh, but that's not what this list is. This is for packaging. If you're curious about the cigar list, uh, we will be back here tomorrow at uh, the same time, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for the top 25. Um, we will be doing it live. Brooks and I will be smoking, hopefully. Um, I don't know why that left. That's not what I wanted to do. You can see our slideshow. Um, and uh, we will be taking some of your questions. I know there was, I think, one or two we tried to address in here um, as we were going. But tomorrow, we'll specifically take some questions at the end um, of the top 25. Unlike last year, there will not be a separate post show. So we'll do the full 25 to 1. And then um, immediately uh, at the tail end of that, we'll, we'll do, take some questions and give you our thoughts. And hopefully, we're not too drunk by the end of it. So um, for Patrick Lurie, Brooks Whittington, I am Charlie Minato, and we will see you back here tomorrow.